Welcome. Hope everybody's having a good Monday and doing better than the markets are doing. I'm going to take a look at that. It's a lot of carnage, blood in the streets, everything's down. But is it all bad in the you know, near-term, mid-term forecast? We're also going to check in with Terra Luna and some other new projects. So sit tight. Don't forget to hit the like and subscribe button. And let's begin. So a lot of red here. BTC down 10%, 20% on the 7-day. They're not good. Tear down 30%. We'll be going over what's, uh, what's going on there later. But yeah, obviously the numbers aren't good here. Uh, we have beat the January low, so it's the lowest low of the year for Bitcoin. It's on the verge of the seventh straight week of losses. Now that's only happened once before, 2014, right after the Mt. Gox crash. It's the only time Bitcoin has gone down for seven straight weeks. It was in the seven weeks preceding right after the Mt. Gox crash. So not good. Extreme fear, uh, you know, as expected, at 11 in the extreme fear zone, down from 18 yesterday, down from 28 the day before. Investors are very fearful right now. But, you know, other news, like the Coinbase premium went negative. This is pretty rare. This means BTC is more expensive on Coinbase than Binance. It's almost always the other way around. So the fact that it's turned negative means now it's more expensive on Coinbase, which makes sense because the, the Fed uh, interest rate announcement, that's a U.S. thing. That's the U.S. Fed interest rate that raised interest rates last week. So national U.S. whales, U.S. institutional investors are going to be a little more bearish than whales in other parts of the world. But is it all bad news? Um, and a lot of people are expecting the market to just keep cannibalizing down, down 20,000, 25,000. But let's, let's look at some data. So let's go back to the fear and greed index for Bitcoin. So it's at 11. This is extreme fear and very low. Never gets below this. So in the last 12 months, it's only gone to the 10, 11 zone four times. So here we are, it's at 11, and then these four times, it's been at either 10 or 11. It never gets below that. So this is the lowest it goes. So the question is, what happens to the BTC price right after it reached these other four lows? Let's take a look. So here are the four times. So right after the 10 here, it went down slightly for a couple more days. Then it shot up on a three-month bull run. The 11, that was it was literally the last day of BTC going down. And it went up for three months right after that. Similar story with these two uh, times. When it was at 10 here, it went down for about another week, it looks like. And then it went up for a couple months. 11, that was the very bottom of the bear market there. BTC greed and fear, it hit a low, and then the next day it shot up about, you know, two to three months of upward movement there. So, it, just because investors are fearful right now, that's what this measures here. Right now, there's a lot of fear in the in the market. You know, prices are tanking, so obviously there's going to be, but it could mean that, okay, well, since it's so low, then investors can't get any more fearful, and so prices have to turn around. And if the past uh, price performance of Bitcoin, these four lows of the last 12 months for the Green Fury Index, if that proves true this time, then price is going to go up. So we've got some other bullish news here. Bitfine X Whale, we've been talking about him a lot lately, so here's his trade. So this is when he got filled, his bids got filled, a lot of them in the $36,000 to $37,000 range about a week ago. Here's when he had a lot of bids filled at the $34,000 range a few days ago. Now here he put in a few more bids at the thirty-two dollars to $33,000 range, so it looks like they've gotten filled by now. But what's interesting, it's many less bids here, so he put in tons of bids here, a lot of bids here, but hardly any at thirty-two, dollars which means he must think that we're at the bottom of the bear market prices are going to turn around, otherwise he'd be putting in many more bids. And also the fact that his bids have been filled here, that's bullish, that's good news. Because some people thought he might have been spoofing, he might have put the bids here and then canceled them at the last second, which would cause prices to jump upward 5 to 10 percent, and he would sell into the market, meaning it was like a fake out, he was bearish the whole time. That's not the case. All of his bids at 36 and 34 have been filled, meaning he is buying Bitcoin, and obviously thinks it's going to be going up in the near term, in the mid terms. So this is all very bullish. If you look at uh, the Pinex Whale's last few trades, have been very accurate. He had a lot of bids filled, about 34,000 here in January. Went up right afterwards. Sold a lot of 45,000 in late March. It went down, and it started a couple days after that, it started going down for a month or two. So he's he's very accurate, very accurate with sort of midterm directional trades. This is good news. The fact that he thinks it's bottomed out, 
more possible good news. The CPA, the CPI uh, index update is coming out on Wednesday. So if that's good news, if it's uh, better than expected uh, job rate data, then you know that can be the catalyst to turn the market around. Additionally, if this is worse than expected data, I mean, nothing can really take the markets even lower. You kind of almost expect it's going to be worse than expected data. So if it's anything but that, it's going to go up. So this could be a catalyst that's out on Wednesday. Let's look at some altcoins here. So here's one coin that was immune to the losses of the last day, Cold Dow. They, so they've given up a few of the gains in the last hour or two, but they were up a good 15% yesterday when the market was down 10%. So this is huge. So what was going on there? So the group Anonymous, uh, the hacking group Anonymous, 1.4 million Twitter followers, big group, they've been responding to a bunch of Cold Dow's tweets and uh, interacting with Mr. Imodulus. That got a lot of attention right there. He's, uh, you know, for small cap coin, get their attention. It's a pretty big deal. Additionally, Mr. Imodulus, he put up this here. This shows the top 50 uh, coin holders for Cold Dow. They're known as the Guardians. And then what their wallets have been doing, buying or selling lately. So this is the top 20 here, so it's been almost all buying, no selling. Only one person in the top 20 has sold a little bit, and then everyone else has either held, and then six people have buying. So for one person selling, there's six buyers. So the Colt Dow community, especially the whales, the big uh, holders here, they're very bullish on the coin. So for a small market cap coin, you know, you can make the argument it's only going to be going up from here. And Terra Luna did not have a good day. It dropped 20% of the day as it well dumps. Uh, Terra's USD stable coin, which became a peg. So let's take a look at that, see what's going on. So even by market standards, Terra got hammered today, down 22%, which is the rest of the coins, 8 to 10%. And their stable coin got de pegged slightly. It's trading at about 98 cents now off its $1 peg. So what's going on here? It seemed a single whale and a coordinated. Uh, multiple simultaneous purchases sold $285 million worth of UST. They did it in a few transactions, $108 million in Binance, $84 million was sold and converted to Ethereum on an um, unknown blockchain, on an unknown exchange. They also, another separate $100 million they sold on a third exchange. Simultaneously, they moved a lot of money off of uh, the anchor lending protocol and the curve protocol to simulate loss of investor confidence, but because all this sort of happened simultaneously, a lot of people think there's a coordinated attack, maybe a competing blockchain, they don't like the attention Terra has been getting, they wanted to show that their uh, stablecoin peg is, you know, you can't trust it, if large sales happen, it will be removed off its peg, but it, it only went down to 98 cents, it's not like it got hammered down to 80 cents or 90 cents, I think, you know, 280 million of instantaneous sales and it only gets 2 cents off its peg and it's recovering now pretty good. Bad, and they also, there was an infusion of capital, it jumped, the rumors that Jump Crypto uh, exchanged $200 million of UST for Tether right afterwards to stabilize the, the peg. That makes sense, because Jump Crypto, they bailed out Solana during the wormhole, they infused $320 million capital of the markets. They are one of the biggest liquidity makers in both equities markets and crypto markets, so that would make sense that, that was Jump Crypto. Go to the tweet of the day here, Rand Nooner, tweet of the weekend. Just uh, funny stuff. 34,000, two days ago, Rand Nooner tweets, 34,000 is the last four for BTC. We break 34,000 to the downside, and we risk hitting 33,900 pretty fast. Trade carefully, man. Thank you, Rand. Thank you for those uh, amazing insights into the market. Crash $100 very fast. Rand's been tweeting quite a bit lately. Cardano tweets, got some attention before that. A bunch of tweets today. Yeah, tweet a lot. Tweet a lot there. Anyways, that's it for today. I'll be back tomorrow with another video. See everyone later.